Welcome to the Networking with Michelle podcast, the show dedicated on providing you the how-tos of marketing and networking strategies. Here we believe in the Jim Rohn quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Networking with Michelle. Today's special guest is Danny Creed. He is an internationally recognized master business coach, speaker, and author. Um, He is a leading authority on business and personal development, highly regarded keynote speaker, workshop and seminar leader, and an elite Brian Tracy International Certified Sales Trainer. You know, I love Brian Tracy. I've been fortunate to promote his (laughs) products. And he is here today to talk about his new book, A Life Best Lived, A Story of Life, Death, and Second Chances. Dan, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you very much. I'm doing just fine, Michelle. Thank you for having me. So how do you, we talk about coaching, business coaching, life coaching a lot here, but how did you get your start and how did you become a master business coach? <laughs> well, let, let's start with that. Uh, I have over 8,000 hours of logged coaching time. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, I'm approaching that mythical 10,000 hours. That's enough, yeah. <laughs> you know, and sometimes I wonder, golly, you know, the uh, the toll it's taken, but uh, it's been a wonderful ride. I, I really got, got started in this in that uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I I was raised on a farm in, in South Central Kansas, and uh, I was the guy who wanted to get off the farm. And... Uh, <laughs> And I just got bit early on in the early days of before even people could understand what the term entrepreneurial meant. I got very involved in an entrepreneurial industry. And uh, uh, one thing led to another. I've done 14 startup businesses. Wow. And that's why I don't have any hair, if you could see me. I, I, I've done 14 startup businesses and uh, we're uh, fairly successful in all of them. And uh, uh, and I've done it, started working with people as I did this, the, the startups, learned a lot. Somebody asked me the other day, what qualified me over and above any of the other people who call themselves a coach? And I said, well, I've, I've had my rear end handed to me 85 times in 40 <laughs> languages. <laughs> you know? And, and uh, over the years, I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes. And I've, and I've also done a lot of things right. And So one thing evolved, and so I ended up doing over 400 turnaround uh, 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 projects and turning around businesses. And so one of the one of the the reasons why my clients hire will hire me and stay with me a very long time is just simply that I've I've set where they set. Mm, I've been there. I've always been involved in sales and marketing and really street fighting. Even when I was CEO of a company, I I was. We were. I was out there. I was always going to all the trade shows, and and I, I call it my experience of street fighting experience, and that's very very different than many people who are in the industry I'm in. So we have a little different perspective, and we go about it a little more. Uh, uh, we attack things a little more, and and we really uh, really work on the clients' needs from their point of view, and I think that's very important because I would guess a very high ninety percentile and higher of the coaches out there today are more interested in telling you how they're going to help you versus asking how they're going to help you. Um, you mentioned your 80,000 80, hours logged in, and I just got the book Outliers this week, yes. so I haven't dived into it yet. Malcolm Gladwell, yeah. Right, but I've been hearing about it. Now, so bear with me, but my question is, do you think we need to go in to our business or into our project expecting to do those 10,000 hours or is that something that should just come naturally? No, you know, 10,000 hours is, is really something that really takes a lot of commitment, a lot of focus. And so you really have to try to understand what the definition of that might be. For me, it started out as, you know, I, I don't know that I would ever, I, you know, 10,000 hours to me represented initially working in a factory for for my whole life and walking away with the gold watch. That wasn't me. That was not me. What? But what I saw it as is uh, I, I, from a very young age, uh, I, the only way I had money in my pocket was selling something. 
So I saw the 10,000 hours originally as becoming uh, great at a skill, and that skill was selling and marketing. And that's where I originally said, I'm going to, you know, 10,000 hours. And I think that's where Mr. Gladwell's focus too. I mean, you know, what, what can you spend? Cause I believe that through my experiences of these 8,000 hours of coaching now, but probably I have hit 10,000 hours over 40 years of, of as a salesperson that, uh, you know, that that's a skill I can take with me anywhere. I can do anything with that. I can go sell anything, ideas. Uh, strategies, uh, training, you know, so that's something I focused on. And, and back to your question, I think that uh, I think you have to start with skills to build on that uh, 10,000 hours. When it comes, because we do speak a lot about getting a coach. Um, yes. I guess I want to, for those people, when is a good time to change your coach, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't think that is talked about enough. What's your take on that? Oh, I've got a strong take on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking. Uh, you're setting me up great here. Uh, here's my take, and I and I really am very adamant about this. I believe people don't understand before they hire a coach what kind of coach they want. And I am telling you right now, there are a lot of good coaches, quote unquote coaches out there. But I, I know also that coach is the word coach is the nom de jour in the world today. Anyone can call themselves a coach. Actually, I, I, I track it and I found 43 different ways somebody can call them <laughs> themselves a coach so far. So, and where that becomes dangerous is in some levels of life coaching and where that becomes dangerous is certainly in business coaching. Because to answer your question, some I've met many, many people. Uh, I don't believe I have competition. And my only competition is from people who randomly call themselves a business coach mm -hmm. or a coach. Uh, uh, a client hires them and they're not successful. So then by the time I get to them, uh, the client's going, well, I tried coaching. It doesn't work. But for me, for instance, if you know that you're in business and you want to develop personally or develop your business, you need to look for somebody, number one, that has owned a business before, that might help, who has successfully uh, completed uh, training uh, uh, specific to, to that. Uh, you should know some, you should work with somebody who's, uh, who's required. Uh, I require myself to have 250 hours of training every year. Oh, wow. I mean, you know, so it's just like, you know, I had a dream one time, Michelle, that, uh, I was having, and it came true, which is, which is kind of weird, a lot of it, but, uh, I had a dream. I was having an open heart surgery. And the nurse asked me to meet if I wanted to meet my doctor. And the doctor looked at me and I go, well, you can't do my surgery. And he said, why? And I said, because you're my veterinary. And, and he said, yeah, but I'm a doctor. I've been to med school. Mm -hmm. You know, so the same thing goes to coaching. Why would you go hire anybody off the street that call themselves a coach if you don't know what their credentials are? I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty focused on that because everybody's calling themselves a coach. And if you don't have the experience, if you don't have cr the credentials through life experience, if you don't have s some of those things that are necessary, you got to, you have to be very careful. And I, and I have a whole checklist that I work with Michelle that, that I give to people that are looking for coaches. And I say, look, I would love for you to hire me, but if you're going to talk to other coaches that call themselves a coach, Here's a checklist and compare everybody equally. There's, there's 11 things on that checklist. Just real quick, they are, I have it right here. What kind of brand do they represent? What kind of content do they have? You don't go to college and expect to watch old movies all the time, do you? <laughs> no. You expect to have a curriculum. Right. A good coach good should say, I have a curriculum in a library that I'm going to customize for you. So what kind of curriculum do they have? What kind of system do they represent? Uh, is it rec replicable? Is it proven? Uh, 
Is it uh, proactive or reactive? Um, what kind of training do they have? What kind of support do they have? Do they have a network of support? I have Brian Tracy, so that's pretty good support. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> that's pretty good support. What kind of team do they have around it? Do they utilize technology? Um, you know, what is, what is their success stories? I just finished last night. Uh, compiling a new list of actual case studies of successes of my clients. Would you rather have me just yap at you and tell right. you how good I've done, or would you like to see actual results? So that's probably more of an answer than you wanted. But but I but I think you have to if you're hiring a coach. Uh, the I, I think the bottom line comes down to if you have one already, you've got to look at. Are, are my needs getting met or are they driving me down their, uh, their plan? Because it has to be your plan. One of the things that I believe in 100%, I think it's the lost art in American business today in personal growth and, and otherwise, is simply that no one knows how to listen anymore. No one knows how to listen. Many of the people who call themselves coaches today will come in, and if you ever hear this and you're talking to one, turn around and run. If they go, let me tell you all the reasons why you ought to hire me. <laughs> I'm going to be I'm running from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, the first thing I would ask you, for instance, if, if you approached me, the first thing I would ask you is, look, I'm not right for everyone. Can we talk about what you want, what, what you want to achieve? Um, how fast you want to do it, uh, what kind of issues you have. I don't allow the word problem to come in my conversations, but you have issues, you have needs. So what do we need to tackle? And am I the best choice for you to tackle it with you? Which actually brings me to my next point. Um, I saw this on your Facebook the other day, and I'm actually struggling with this myself. So what are some questions a business owner can ask when it comes to hiring the right person versus the person that needs a paycheck? Because I feel like I'm not necessarily surrounded by yes men because it's not my friends or my team, but I do. I'm a solopreneur, so I'm always contracting out and I have a budget, you know, I'm willing to pay people and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. But then when I get the work, whether it's in the middle or at the end, I'm like, uh, there's a disconnect here. And part of it, I'm, I'm all about self-awareness and self-assessment. So I'm like, okay, am I communicating correctly? What type of leadership? And, you know, am I doing currently that I need to change? But at the same time, I'm like, is everyone just trying to get my, <laughs> my money too? Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, are you talking about uh, uh contractors I'm talking about hiring the right contract partners yes hiring the right contract okay. partners as well yep. as trying to build my team yep well again uh, when I work with when I work with clients business coaching clients and notice I always say business coaching clients I'm not a life coach I, I you know I'm not a happiness coach I'm a business coach <laughs> I'm going to help you grow your business and then you'll be happy you, yeah <laughs> And, and, and if you grow your business, you're happy, right? <laughs> you know. Uh, so the the first thing is always for you, and this is a trick I picked up from. Uh, I, I've been very fortunate, Michelle, and that some of my mentors have been people like Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar and people like that. And 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 I have to tell you, you know, they always they always believed. And something that's not taught a lot anymore, and I, I, it's an integral part of my coaching practice, and that's that there's a foundational recipe for success. And it applies no matter what business you're in, whether you're a consultant or a run a Cadillac dealership or a funeral home or a lumber yard or whatever. There's the same formulas there for everyone. The same basic foundational formula it includes about 11 things, clarity of your business and goal setting and all these things. And so that's where I work from. But one of the things that Brian, that Brian had used to do in, the, in, in his beginning and something I learned from him and I still do to this day. First thing you do is sit down and write out, make a list on a yellow pad of your perfect employee to fit the, the, the fit the scenario you have. He first started using this in, in dating scenarios. Sit down and write down 
you know, if you're a guy, sit down and write down exactly the kind of girl you want to meet. You want to meet a red-headed, left-handed girl from Kansas that lives on the south side of town that knows lots of jokes. Write, be that crazy. Because then a image starts developing so that, you know, when they walk through the door, you know, that's my person. It's not people going, yeah, I could do that. You know, that, that you, so you make a very clear list of exactly you know, the person you want for a particular job. Okay. So that's number one. Okay. If I'm coaching you, that's the first thing I'd tell you to do. I mean, and be ridiculous about it. Okay. You want them to have a good personality. You want them had they worked at Dunkin' Donuts for you know, yeah. however yeah. you want. I want that list completely for each position you want in hiring. And I, by the way, it's a great question. I do this exercise with almost every client I have that uses, that uses contract contractors. Okay. Almost every one of them. Uh, the second thing I would do is I always ask for uh, who have you worked with before? So that leads to number three is, do you have any testimonials or anyone I can call? Now, I run into an issue that I live by confidentiality. No one, I never reveal who my clients are, but I have some clients who have agreed to let me use their story, but just put their want business category they're in. Right. So, right. so if I send you a list of testimonials, for the most part, they're going to go Here's what I think of Coach Dan's services, and I'm in the construction industry. Um, others have been very kind and will let me use their names, you know, and that, of course, we agree through our confidentiality promise. But, but always, you know, check them out. Don't take their word for it. Uh, if they're writers, get an example of what they've written, you know. Uh, I think too many times, based on our personality profile, I work a lot with what they call the DISC assessment. Mm -hmm. And based on the based on your profile, about three of the four profiles there are just uh, are just too uh, quick to just do a gut check and go, "Oh, I like that person. I'm going to hire." Right, them. right. And we always end up paying for it. You know, it's your money. Uh, you mind if I share a quick story? Sure. sure. I I worked with a, a very, I won't use his name, but a very, very famous, one of the top five wealthiest men on earth. And I got to meet him, sat down with him, spent some time with him. And he, t he said a very interesting thing. He said, I, I asked him, I said, how do you keep building your business to its $80 billion business and continue to grow it? What do you do every day? And he goes, every, every day. I try to go to work with the same mentality as I did on my first day of business. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your first day of business? You never make, if, if something's not working, you stop. Mm -hmm. If, if you never spend a penny unless you absolutely are sure, right? You don't waste a nickel. He also said then, he says, I also have in my mentality. Now, here's a guy that's in the top four or five richest men in the world. And he goes, I also try to have the mentality that when I go to bed at night, I think I could be broke tomorrow. Marketing things happen, technology things happen. I could be broke tomorrow. So what am I doing today to protect my tomorrow? And so as a business owner, and I've done 14 startups, like I said, the greatest thing I, I learned, mistake I ever made, and the greatest thing I ever learned probably is to, when I'm ready to make a knee-jerk reaction, I always pull back and say, I'm going to think about it. Yeah. I'm going to make my list. Did I make my list? Did I understand? Because it's my money. It's my <laughs> business. Right. And do you, do you really want to put your business and your money at risk by just randomly saying yes to somebody? That's a good point. So, so take a little more time. And, you know, make that list, take a little more time and make them sell you. Make them ask some questions. And by the way, that's one big thing. If you can't tell, that's one big thing for me. You know, I want somebody to ask me some questions. Right. Because you know what? Here's a secret. I'll get close to the microphone. Not everybody's telling the truth. <laughs> right. Right.
So that not cool? yeah, because it feels like one, um, one. I mean, I have an ideal client, so why not write down my ideal employee? So that stood Absolutely. out in, immediately. And then two, like I ask a lot of questions. But then I sh- now I'm thinking that person should be asking just as many questions as, you know, for me to Absolutely. make sure that we are a good fit. So, yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Well, that good fit thing is very important. Uh, one of the things that, again, if 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 I was you were interviewing me to maybe be your your business coach, one of the first things I would look you right in the eye and tell you, just like we're doing right now, I'd look you in the eye and I'd say, look, I'm not right for everybody. Let me ask you some questions. What are you looking for? What do you, you know, what do you need right now? Uh, what can we get a big win early on? You know, like and based on those things, I, I will be honest and tell you, because I, I don't work with a lot of clients. And a good, a good business coach, if they tell you they work with 100 clients, I'd run from that, too. <laughs> right. Because you can't. So I work very limited. And so, you know, while you're interviewing me, I'm also interviewing you. So if you don't fit, guess what? I want you to win if I work with you. I want you to t- write a great testimonial for me. So the way that's going to happen is if we're a good fit, you right. know. Uh, I want to pivot a little bit. Your book, A Life Absolutely. Best Lived, A Story of Life, Death, and Second Chances. Uh, that's a heavy title. So tell yeah. us a little bit about your book. Thank you. Uh, it kind of It all came about. I'd always wanted to write a, 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 a book that was a business book, but it stepped out a little farther than just business. And, uh, and it turned out life kind of dealt me that opportunity. Uh, a year and a half ago in September of 2015, I was uh, not quite a year and a half. I, I was headed to the airport. Um, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. I was headed to the airport uh, to go to a speech in uh, in uh, I do a lot of speaking and training of international coaches, and I was going to a, a speech in Vancouver, Canada. And on the way to the, uh, I just got back from Kansas, where my mother was, and she had suffered a, uh, uh, she had suffered a stroke and wasn't doing very well. And uh, I came back. I was headed to the airport, and uh, I started feeling bad. I, you know, it wasn't that I was just doubled over in pain, but it, it's weird. I felt like I was dying. And I told my wife, I said, I'm going to miss the flight. We can always reschedule, but why don't we go to the hospital? And so we went to the emergency room. I walked in, and bottom line is uh, they immediately saw something was wrong. They said uh, the doctors uh, cut to the chase said that I had about 48 hours to live. And uh, and within 12 hours, I was in a seven-hour surgery to, for triple bypass heart surgery. Um, lots went on around that, I you know, just to save us time here. But what happened was a lot of interesting things happened while that was going on. Of course, it was just crazy. You know, what do you do? I mean, what do you do? What do you do if you're told, hey, we don't want to think about that. But if somebody says you have 48 hours to live, that's it. What do you do? What do you think about? How do you change? Who do you call? So I was going through all of that. Uh, I came out the other side. I woke up late that night, uh, came through. They went and told my wife and family in the waiting room that I was okay. They called my sister who was holding vigil with my mother in Kansas. And she passed away four minutes after I woke up from my surgery. Um, It was like she was there with me, um, protecting me. And, uh, and then I, my, my surgeon, who was one of the top surgeons in the Southwest came to me the morning one. And he said, he said, Look, I checked out who you are and what you do. He said, so I'm going to challenge you. He says, the challenge is this. When when people get a second chance, when people get, I give them the second chance at life, most of them don't honor. Most of them will go out and start eating cheeseburgers and smoking and, and treating their bodies poorly. He goes, so I'm going to challenge you. What will you do to change how you walk, talk, think, act, eat? What would how how will you change if at all? Right. And I I mean I'm telling you I'm the wrong guy to ask that because I I couldn't you know I couldn't move at all. I mean I'm just I'm laying in a hospital bed eight hours after you know major surgery, and and I should have took stock in you know in in uh, uh, sticky notes 
because my wife brought me in and I had sticky notes everywhere. Just drove everywhere. I'm going, how would I change? How would I change? What would I do? And again, the bottom line came down to that as I went home, I spent seven days in the hospital. When I went home, I'm still doing this and I can't move, can't hardly do anything. So I, I, I went up in my office and pretty much that's all I could do. And, and I, and what happened was again, shorten this whole thing down is that I came up, I was looking for big major changes I could make when the bottom line was, you know what, Michelle, it is not the big changes we have to make. It's mas mastering and disciplining ourselves to make little changes that we already know we need to do. And so out of that came what I call the 11 commitments. Okay. Um, and the 11 commitments are, uh, are things that I think we need to do to create a life best lived. That And the, the bottom line out of this, Michelle, is, is this, and this is the real crux of the thing, that we all, every one of us, I found I did, you do, we all have the ability to ward ourselves a second chance in life <clears throat> and a third chance and a fourth chance. But if you think about it, most people sit around and wait for somebody to give them a second chance, to award them with a second chance. When you and I and everybody, all your listeners, have the opportunity to give themselves that second chance. So what are you going to do with that second chance? And what we found was, as I started digging into it and researching some of this then, was, was that um, that second chance it, it can be had by anybody, no matter what their age, no matter what their income, no matter what their gender. It doesn't make any difference that we have the ability to go, you know, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I'm finally going to do something about it. So the book evolved then based on the second chance theme and the 11 commitments. In fact, I've created a, a seminar that goes along with the book now that I'm, I'm now doing. I just got back from Kansas. I did one back there. It was just a fabulous experience. Uh, it's about a half-day seminar, and it's all based on implementing the 11 commitments. Um, of which the first one, do we have time for me to tell you about the first one? Sure. Yes. Okay. The first one is just the most important. And it came to me in a vision that I believe my mom's she visited me one last time. I couldn't go to sleep. I didn't sleep for about a week. It was remnants of anesthesia and a number of things I talk a lot about. Anyway, I, I got this image one night and it was a yellow sign. I have it right here. Uh, it's a yellow sign. And it, her hands were around it. And it said, life is best lived than feared. How many of us go through life fearing something, anything? And, we, and it doesn't allow us to move forward in life. It doesn't allow us to do the little things that, that we need to do. It doesn't allow us to do the big things that we're afraid of something. So I, I took this out when I finally went back to work and started working with my clients in their new year planning. And that was the only question I used. And I'll ask you this to think about, you know, what fears, small or large, do you have that keeps you from moving forward or getting better or growing? And it's just as applicable personally as it is business wise. Absolutely. But I'll give you one quick story. I have a client that we found one of these fears was he just didn't believe that he had the education or background to be a successful businessman. Once we worked specifically on that, his businesses went, it was a small startup. His business went from $600,000 a year last year. This year we'll finish the year at 5.2 million. Whoa. And it was all based on, it was all based on mindset. So, yeah. Wow. Sorry to be so long winded there. No, that's powerful. Um, is it safe to assume that those 11 commitments is a process that allows you to live your life, your personal life and your business um, accordingly? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's again, the, the, the uh, commitment one is I'm, I'm going to identify whatever fears are out there and, I, and I'm going to try to attack them and eliminate them um, to show you how simple some of these are. Uh, uh, the commitment eight is. Um, I'm going to live a more grateful life. How many of us woke up this morning, rolled on, the, rolled on the side of the bed and said, I get another day. Right. 
I get another day. How many of us have went out and went out to eat at a restaurant and made it an extra point to tell the kid getting paid less than minimum wage, say, you did a great job today. Thank you. It'll change your life. I started doing it again. And I'm telling you, it's just the most gratifying, fun thing. Now, think about it, applying it as a business person. When was the last time you told a partner or a friend or uh, a, a mentor or a uh, contractor that you just out of the blue said, you know, I, I really appreciate your work. Thank you. Right. Spirit of gratitude goes a long way. It, it goes a long way. Uh, the, the number nine is, is I think we need to live. I, I pledge to live a, a more uh, forgiving life, you know, mm-hmm. And and the number one thing you have to forgive to start with is yourself. When I started making some lists of things that I yeah. I was holding in, I'm going, holy, what is going on here? I need to forget that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Because they started out very small and, and evolved into something very big that they weren't. And you think about business. How many, how many grudges, how many hard feelings do you have as you come up and you grow your business and somebody did you wrong and oh, forget about it. Life is, believe me, when somebody's been to the edge, life is pretty short. So what's next for you? Well, uh, what's next? I've got a, uh, I'm building, continue to build as always my coaching business. I'm always looking for great people who just haven't figured out how to go to the next level. That's where I really enjoy doing. Uh, The, another important thing is I'm going to really work. There's the, the book has really touched a, uh, touched a nerve in the veteran communities, uh, in the uh, church communities, because it's all about second chances on both of those. Uh, In the job hunt communities, people are looking for a job that got laid off after years of loyalty. The whole concept of second chance is very powerful. And I, I think it was put in front of me to to grow, to help even more people. So I can do that through a lot more speaking and doing um, uh, the workshops and seminars. And, and uh, right now we're building, you know, a landing page, but you can get the, just put in Danny Creed at amazon.com and you'll find the book there. Um, and it, it, it's just, I'm, I'm going to do more workshops. Center. I just finished the audiobook version. Uh, a lot of people who can't see very well or, or, travel in their car a lot, just demanded the audiobook version. So that's what's next. I mean, I, I just, I believe that there's a lot of people who um, I, can, I can help through this message. And, you know, Zig Ziglar once said, uh, the way of life, and I've always lived by this, and paraphrase, he says, help enough people get what they want, and you'll get what you want. And, and that's kind of the way I live my life and where this book has taken me. How can people get in touch with you and how do you define success? Oh, that's very good. <laughs> I bet you ask that a lot, don't you? That, well, that's, my, that's always my last question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, again, they can get the book at Amazon.com by Danny Creed. I've been going by Dan forever, but it's Danny. My given name is Danny. Danny Creed. And my uh, my, biz, my business website is www.realworld coach.com and uh and it it's a great site you can gather a lot of information on me Uh, of course i'm on linkedin just look look for me on linkedin i've got a very detailed profile there so people can get an idea of some of the successes Uh, my email if anybody wants to write me is d creed at focal point coaching.com that's d c r e e d at F-O-C-A-L-P-O-I-N-T-C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G, coaching.com. And I'd be glad I answer every email. I I was up to 1.30 this morning answering emails because I just love doing it. Uh, you know, and you can call me. So how do I define success? I think I already told you. Defining success for me is helping enough people get what they want, helping the right people get what they want, so then I get what I want. It's all about listening and helping people and success to me is uh, I had a client once that told me that our work together changed their family tree. That's powerful. And the reason it did was 
because my clients have to do the work. If you and I work together, you have to do the work. I can't do it for you. Um, it, but by being beside you in dark times, by walking in the battle side by side, by listening, by understanding, by helping you, giving you another option, making better decisions, that your business grows, your family grows, your, your life flourishes, I'll get rewarded. That's powerful. Danny, I want to acknowledge you for just having, you're a fighter. Thank you. I am. You're a fighter. (laughs) You're a fighter. And that in itself is inspiration. Uh, So thanks for being on the show. Oh, I'm honored. Everyone, I hope you got something from this. Remember, I believe in you and a personal connection leads to an influential network. So thanks for networking with Michelle.